Hello everyone, welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impeded matching. The objective of this video is to discuss why the source and loop need to be complex conjugate in order to have a match network. So this video, I'm going to show you with an equation. When the source and loop is actually complex conjugate, then we will be able to achieve maximum power transfer from the source to the load. So this will be the objective of this video. The earlier on series discussion on impeded matching part one, I basically define what is impeded matching. How can we actually achieve impeded matching in order to have a maximum power transfer? I have also put the playlist of impeded matching under the description. So please take a look on those playlists in order to understand more in depth on impeded matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please feel free to comment how can I actually improve my delivery. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's start. Okay, by quickly revisit what is impeded matching. Impeded matching is required to provide the maximum possible transfer of power between a source and its load, which means that in order to transfer all the possible power from the source to the load, we need the source and the load to be matched. Maximum power transfer occur when the load is equal to complex conjugate of the source impedance. Okay, so let's understand what is this with the help of this diagram here. So from this diagram here, this is basically the source, this is the load. So from here you can see that basically if we have a complex conjugate, okay, you can see over here this x1 and this x2, they basically is a complex conjugate, which means that x1 is equal to x2, but they have the different so-called minus j and plus j. So when this actually occur, maximum power transfer actually occurs also. Okay, so later on, as I mentioned earlier on, with an equation, I'm going to show it to you why this is the case here. Okay, three reasons why impedance matching is required in RF circuit. Okay, as I share with you, firstly, we want to achieve maximum power transfer, all the power transfer from the source to the load. Next, we are also going to have some form of impedance transformation. Okay, for example, we can transform from 50 ohm to 500 ohm. So you can see that with impedance matching, okay, we can actually join, for example, from a 50 ohm to a 500 ohm. Next, also, this impedance matching can be an aid in terms of rejecting unwanted signal. So this impedance matching can also like a filter. Okay, they basically ensure whatever that you want to pass okay, under the maximum power transfer, they pass it. Okay, anything that you do not want it to be passed, they can actually reject it also. Okay, so this diagram here shows the impeded matching as I showed it to you earlier on. Okay, but before that, as I told you that I'm working up an equation, but just imagine we are not able to know that this need to be complex conjugate at this moment. So at this moment, okay, let's forget that these are actually all complex conjugate. Let's take it as a norm. Okay, so this is first thing that I want to highlight before I go through all the equation. As I told you that this is actually what we actually want to do for impedance matching okay so this v1 okay which is here which is the source z1 okay which is over here which is the source impedance z2 okay which is the load impedance so i want to fully describe the impedance of z1 basically consists of two terms one is r1 one is jx1 same for the load okay r2 plus jx2 as you can see from here basically this impedance is a combination of resistor and inductor Okay, as I told you that we will not be able to know that it's a capacitor. So again, for this case, let's assume that this is R2 again with the inductor of JX2. Okay, as I told you that before we work up, we probably will not be able to know that they need to be complex conjugate. So therefore, I actually outcome to have this. Next, okay, how can we actually find the I1, okay, which is the current that flowing through? So if we have the source and of course, I know all the impedance. Okay, I will be able to find my I1. Do you agree? So in short, this is the voltage 
over all the total resistance. So basically the total resistance will be Z1 plus Z2 because they are in series. And therefore I will be able to find the current that flow over here. Okay, next we need to calculate the power. Okay, how we calculate the power okay, is simply just I squared R. If you still remember, I squared R. Okay, for example, I want to find the power over here. Okay, if I know the current, okay, which is the same okay, for the source and the load, okay, which is classified as I1. Okay, so if I take this I1 squared multiplied by this R2, okay, I will be able to find my power that will be delivered to the R2 as mentioned here. Okay, so I1 I had calculated early on, which is V1 over Z1 plus Z2 over here. So this squared is because of this I squared R. So this is also squared multiplied by R2 here. Okay, so next, okay, let's open up this bracket here. So this is V1 squared R2 here. So this Z1 and Z2, I basically put them in a common term. Okay, so this will be an equation one. Okay, next, in order to find the optimum value for maximum P2, okay, differentiate P2 with respect to X2. Okay, for example, for this case here, for example, if I want to achieve the maximum value of P2 with respect to X2, which means that I need to know what is the value of X2 in order to find the maximum P2. I need to differentiate this P2 with respect to X2. Okay, so this is the outcome that I actually differentiate this equation with X2. Unfortunately, I will not be able to show it to you how I actually do this differentiate, okay, but I assume that you will be able to do this. But trust me, this is all correct. So what I need to do is basically I differentiate this equation one with respect to X2. I actually get this value here. Next, in order to find the maximum P2, okay, I let this dP2 and dX2 is equal to zero. Okay, which means that this is equal to zero. This will be gone, gone. And what I left is basically minus two X1 plus X2, which is over here. Since they are equal to zero, this is also gone. So therefore, from here, I conclude that X2 is equal to minus X1, okay, which means that it's actually a complex conjugate. So over here, I will be able to know that okay, the reactants need to be complex conjugate for this case here. What left is basically, I do not know the value of R1 and R2. Okay, why, why they need to be same? For example, we know that. Okay, so I'm going to work out with another example to show it to you. R1 need to be the same as R2. Wow, the reactants of X1 and X2 need to be complex conjugate. Okay, let's do this. Let's put equation three into one. Okay, so which means that we put this equation three into one, which means that this all the term disappeared. So what I left is basically P2 is equal to B1 squared R2, R1 plus R2 squared, which is written here. Okay, again, okay, in order to find the optimum value for Maximum P2, okay, I need to differentiate P2 with respect to R2. Okay, so I need to know okay, what is the best possible value of R2 in order to have maximum P2. So therefore, I differentiate this P2 with respect to R2, which means that I differentiate this equation okay, with R2. Okay, and therefore, I actually achieve this equation here. Okay, again, if you still remember, okay, we need to read this term into zero in order to find the best possible value of R2 to achieve maximum P2. So when this is equal to zero, this whole thing goes to zero, and therefore I only left this top portion, okay, which is illustrated here, which is equal to zero. So if you cannot see this, you can see that R1 plus R2 squared here, B1 I put it here. So minus 2 R1 plus R2, B1 squared R2 squared equals to zero. Right, so I will not be able to show you all the essential steps, okay, but these are all correct. So finally, from here, you can see that R1 need to be equal to R2. And therefore, in order to have maximum power transfer, okay, the complex conjugate must be, reactants must be complex conjugate, and R1 and R2, they need to be equal. So which means that when R1 is equal to R2, and Jx1, okay, for example, for this case, okay, which is a complex conjugate minus Jx2, then I can ensure maximum power transfer from the source to the load. So from here, you can see that with an equation, okay, I actually proved that in order to have maximum power transfer, this need to be obeyed in order to achieve that. Next, let's do a very quick discussion, okay, why we need to have this impedance matching. 
the key purpose of putting of this impeded matching okay, is to make this whole thing looking into here as a complex conjugate. Okay, let's take a look. When the source and load impedance are not conjugate, okay, so this is a typical design. Okay, for example, this is a source, this is a load. Okay, I can't tell my customer to change the another load in order to have a complex conjugate, right? So for example, okay, so therefore I probably will not have much control on the load. So what I can actually do is basically I can only insert this impeder matching here. So when I actually insert this impeder matching, when I actually look inside here, this is actually a complex conjugate of the source. So therefore I know that with this maximum power transfer actually occur from the source to the load. Okay, so this is what it means. Okay, when the source and load impedance, they are not conjugate, then an impeder matching network has to be inserted to force the load set L to look like the complex conjugate of the source. Okay, so how can we design this impeder matching? In short, okay, these are the three form here. Okay, for example, the common one will be two element L network, which is much more easier. So the next video, I'm going to show it to you, this two element L network. Okay, we can also have three element T or pi network. Okay, so this is having a shorter bandwidth. Okay, so later on, I'm going to also going to describe, okay, but we have more degree of control and we also have the multiple element network. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your support. See you guys.